when you meet a founder um, in any setting, it could be a pitch, it could be any conversation, um, what are you looking for? Yeah, so the big thing we're looking for, is, I'll use a term, the term is the idea maze. Um, so this is a term from our, our, our partner, Balaji Srinivasan, so that I give him credit for this. He, he, are, he articulated and described this conceptually in the, the way that we use it now. He said sort of put into, put into um, a real definition kind of what we were kind of, what we were all kind of grasping for and trying to understand. So, it, so it's the term he uses, he calls the idea maze. So what is the idea maze? The idea maze is the process of going from having an idea, you know, I want to build a product that does X, um, and then basically it's the five or 10 years of thinking and processing and scenario planning and doing, you know, user research and, you know, kind of thinking your way through the twists and turns of every aspect of, of sort of how that, how that will play out over time. Right. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, the idea maze is like, okay, you know, what if we, you know, name, use lots of examples, but like, you know, what, you know, what, yeah, like what if we brought the iPhone to market, what would people use it for? Okay. Then how would people build apps? How would those apps, you know, happen? You know, what, what apps would make sense? You know, what old desktop apps would make sense to transfer over? What, which ones wouldn't, what new apps would emerge? What APIs do we want, do we have to provide? You know, what's the relationship we have to have with the carrier? You know, how much bandwidth do we need to have? What are the price points, right? So it's the thousand questions that follow just having the product idea. And the idea maze basically is the process of working your way through those, those thousand questions, all the different twists and turns of how this is gonna unfold the market. And, and the reason this is important is because what you find is the great entrepreneurs are really good at going through the idea maze. The, the, the great entrepreneurs mm -hmm. are really good at navigating through like those thousand questions. And they're really good at like really understanding in detail all the twists and turns that their idea is gonna take. They're really good at anticipating all the problems that they're gonna have in the market all the sort of key bottlenecks, the things they're gonna to have to unlock, how they're gonna convince people things are a good idea, what they're gonna charge. They, like they're really good at working through all those ideas and they, they work through that kind of like, it's a maze. And, and look, they're not right all the time. Like they hit, it's like a maze. They hit points where they can't get any further and then they have to backtrack, right? And they have to reconfigure mm -hmm. their product and idea and they have to adapt, right? And so that, that's why the maze metaphor is the right one. But then they do work their way all through and then they have a good chance to get out the other side of the maze and have a big success. The, the great founders basically, the really, really good founders have worked their way through the maze even before they start the company, um, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what you find is they have often spent five or 10 years prior to the time they meet with us and they have actually navigated their way all the way through the maze. And maybe, and right, and maybe that's because they worked at a previous company that tried and failed at something and now they think they understand why it tried and failed and now they know how to do it right. Maybe it's because it was their hobby for a long time and now they've decided to make it their mm -hmm. profession. You know, maybe it's something that they've actually been prototyping in their spare time. Maybe they already have the product working at the time they come in to see us, which is, you know, what's the best, what's the best illustration you've made your way through the idea maze? The product is already working by the time you come see us. Like that, 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 that you know, by the time the Google guys raise money, the Google search engine is up and running. They had already proven their way through the maze, right? And so, so anyway, so the, the best founders, they've, they've gone through that process. They've put the burden on themselves to think through all the twists and turns. And then what happens is in the meeting, basically what happens is we can ask increasingly detailed questions. Um, mm -hmm. about all of the specifics of what they're thinking about, and they will have increasingly detailed answers, right? Whereas yeah. the founders that haven't been through the idea maze, they fuzz out, right? They, they yeah. haven't thought it through and, and they fuzz out. And, and, and basically, th this is sort of the cheat code. Like the, the ones that have been through the idea maze already, like they've got a really good shot. The ones that have, are at the very beginning, you know, the, 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 the archetype of I have a brand new idea, I have a clean sheet of paper, I got raise money against it, and I'm going to start the idea maze on day one. Of course, what it means is we're going to pay for the trip through the idea maze. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. And like they may or may not make it through by the time they run out of money. And so those are just much more dangerous. Yeah. You know, I think so having, having done this for like, you know, the last year or so, it's amazing how very quickly apparent it is when somebody's kind of done the idea maze or not, because they kind of explain to you, even sometimes we heard you asking all the different things they've tried. Right. They'd be like, well, we did X because Y didn't really work. And we could have probably done Z, but, you know, it's probably not a good idea in this context. And it doesn't really matter what the right answer is. You just know that they're kind of spend, spending like years just thinking about it and tried everything and run into all the, the dead ends. So, and it almost kind of shines through very, very quickly. It's almost undeniable. Um, all right. Okay. I'll give, so, you an ex I'll give you an example. Uh, let me give it, sorry, let me give an example. So our partner, Martin Casado. So our partner, Martin. So, we, you know, we, one of our first wins as a, as a venture firm was, was, He's now our partner, but Martin Casado has started a company called Nasira that we back that, that VMware bought, and it's it's now a really big and important you know product in, in networking, software-defined networking. He pitched this idea at us. We're like, wow, that sounds intriguing. We went and talked to all the experts we knew in the networking industry, and they basically all told us it's a stupid idea; it'll never work. Um, and so we went back to Martin and we said, well, all the experts say it's a stupid idea and it'll never work. And he said, well, that's because they. He basically said that's why they haven't gone through the idea maze; like they don't actually understand what I'm doing. 
And, and we said, well, how do you know? Why are you so confident? He said, well, I've spent the last five years of my life doing this at Stanford, right? And, and that took the form of inventing the concept of software-defined networking. It took the form of actually defining a protocol uh, called OpenFlow, and then it actually took the form of an implementation that was actually already running. And so he, he had spent five years actually proving out the entire thesis for Nasira before we even met him. And we're like, oh, that sounds great. And so, and then of course, then we said the next thing, which was like, oh, that's great. You're going to take the software you built at Stanford. You're going to put in a box and that's what you're going to sell, right? And he's like, oh no, I'm going to throw that all away. Like that software is shit. Like I don't want that software. But he's like, now I know how to do it right, right? So by the time Nasir came to market, he had not only been through the idea maze the first time at Stanford, he actually was, he, he actually shipped version two, right? And so by the mm -hmm. time the existing networking companies figured out what was going on, it was too late. And, and the Nasira software is now the industry standard software for this. But, it, but, it was, but that was the cheat code, right? Is it, he, he had already actually done all this before he raised money. This goes to, by the way, to my, to my favorite startup advice of all time, which everybody always, founders, I think always, some founders love, a lot of founders hate. Like the best startup advice of all time is uh, Steve Martin's advice to aspiring comedians um, in his book, uh, Born Standing Up. And, and the advice, Steve Martin's advice to aspiring comedians is it's a, it's a one-line piece of advice. He says, be so good they can't ignore you. <laughs> 